of your hospital. The men and women who stand by day and night to answer the cry for help when tragedy strikes. This program is dedicated. an affirmative, or are you having stomach trouble? Well, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Mary McCarthy. Harry Coleman. Would you like to get married? Never. Thank heaven. Thank your pocketbook. You can't afford me. Well, at the moment, that's quite true, but uh, perhaps you can afford me. Now, if you'll give me your full name, weekly take-home pay, minus deductions, I'll be glad to give your application serious consideration. Don't you want my measurements, too? Doctor. Uh, take her into uh, treatment room three. I'll be right along. Now, we were uh, discussing... My measurements. Ah, uh, yes. Look, I'll be back. We'll get into that later. Hmm? Like about five years later, Sonny. <laughs> Baby, I don't think you've got five years. <laughs> Emergency ward. Make the story. Doctor, take a look at this. Attempted suicide. Empty bottle of sleeping pills beside the bed and all. Well, there are indications of a severe depression, but hardly a whole bottle. Pulse is too steady. I think we'd better shave her head, give her a blood transfusion, and then cut off all her toenails. Mm -hmm. Ah, <laughs> suddenly she's awake. How do you feel? Better. I thought so. How many pills did you take? Six or seven. Try to pump your stomach just for spite, but I don't have the time. Carter, see if you can get uh, Sergeant Quinn. Find out her nearest relative. Meanwhile, put her in the ward for a couple of hours. Doctor. Yes? I know what you think of me. I don't think anything of you, Mrs. Mona James. And it's Miss. Either way, everything's over and forgotten. Now, I've got work to do. So young and in such an important hurry. No time for a friendly word, no questions. Don't you want to know why? smashed into a tree with my motorcycle. Well, let's uh, look you over, huh? No, wait a minute. What now? Look, is there going to be a report of this? Sure, it's the law. And I don't want to be treated. Wait a minute, you just sit still. You need attention, hmm? Yeah, attention. That's how it all started, you see. You mind giving us the details later? Right now, let's patch up the pieces. Hmm? But you've got to listen to me, Doc. Doc, you've got to listen. I Sit down, boy, and stay I'd there. I'm trouble, Doc. Boy, I... will you? I... Look! If I want to die, that's my business. Another suicide? Motorcycle. Oh, what'd you do? Ride it or wear it? That's not important. I just want to know if anyone has to hear about this. Well, I imagine your parents might be interested. But you can't tell them. Well, I won't have to. You see, when you go home, they're just liable to notice a slight change in your appearance. Dr. Kohler. Oh, yes, sir. Later. Yes, sir. Later. I wouldn't worry about his apparent insecurity. He comes highly recommended. As a doctor? <laughs> Dr. Pearson. Hmm? Somebody help me, please. Get a gurney. Prepare a treatment room. <laughs> I'm Dr. Pearson. How did this happen? My boy, my son, Greg, he's a retarded child. He stumbled, fell into a portable heater, and by the time we got to him, he was... Really, Doctor? Oh, yes, Carter. Oh, would you place him down here, please? Now, 
you understand that even, even under the best of conditions, burns like these can be fatal. We understand. Just do the best you can. All right, Carter, take him. All we can ask. Oh, Mr. Uh, Lepesco. George Lepesco. This is my wife. I leave. Uh, why don't you have her sit down there, and uh, we'll keep you informed. Thanks, Doctor. Come on, Eileen. We'll wait over here. There's nothing to wait for. Please don't say that, Eileen. Sit down and we'll wait. I don't want to wait. I want to go home. I've got things to do around the house. I've been so busy lately, I've gotten behind. Mrs. If you'll excuse me. Oh, Mrs. Lepescu, your son is dying. I have no son, Doctor. Mrs. Lepescu, you don't mean that. But I do. You can do whatever you like. I really don't care. Sergeant Quinn, what can I do for you? I'm Howard Ames. Oh, yes. Um, she said you were her fiance. Uh, I used to be, ab about five years ago. We had a misunderstanding. I see. How does she look? Oh, I'll get Dr. Pearson on the phone and see if you can go in and see her. No, wait a minute. Tell me, I want to know what to expect. Well, she, uh, she looks... She looks tired. She was real beautiful once. Like no other girl I ever knew. Sure. Mary, get Dr. Pearson on the phone for me, huh? Yes, sir. What are you gonna do with that? I'm not gonna do anything with it. You're just gonna sit in it for a while? I don't wanna sit in it. I wanna get out of here. You'll be out of here soon enough. Your parents have been contacted. They'll be down to pick you up in an hour. Parents? How'd they find out? We found them and told them you were here. Great. Just great. Now you've really done it. I'll never hear the end of it. My old man will ride me for the next ten years. Well, you can't blame him too much. After all, an accident's an accident. You'll probably be back to school in a couple of weeks. It's not school I'm worried about. My dad runs a grocery store, and I'm the only one who helps him. I'm sure he'll be able to get along without you for a while. Sure he will. And all the while he's doing it, he'll be giving me a hard time about Angela. <laughs> well, comes a twist. Who's Angela? Angela Cartwright. Maybe you heard of her father. No. Nope. Cartwright Boats Incorporated? Oh, so your father thinks you're out of your league, is that it? So what's all this about a motorcycle? Well, I... I heard Angela say she loved motorcycles one day, so I... Well, I took the money I'd been saving for college, and I... And you bought a motorcycle? Yeah. And Papa hit the roof? Yeah, right after he hit me. <laughs> Anyway, I took Angela riding on it. We went to Harper's Hill, and she... Well, she asked me if I could do tricks with it, so... So you ran up a tree. Where's Angela now? Well, she went to call a doctor. Then when the ambulance came and everything, I guess she got lost in the shuffle. Well, I think it was very daring of him. It was a sweet gesture. There are some men who put women on a pedestal. Well, sure. He puts Angela on a pedestal, and she puts him in a hospital. <laughs> I got a tip for you, a dropper. Come on, in we go. Easy. Well, come on, push him out of here. Well, just don't stand there on your pedestal.
Hello, Howard. I wasn't sure you'd come. The sergeant said you needed me. I did. I thought I was going to die. It must have been pretty rough. You better now? Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to be all right. Would you mind coming? No. I'm glad to help. How do you feel? I, I mean, except for this. Oh, I've been getting by. Got a job. Got a lot of friends. I guess that was our trouble, huh? Me and all my friends. My wife's still out there. Yeah, she's there. Look, Mona. No matter what happened, I don't hold a grudge or, or anything like that. Whatever you were, whatever you did, it never mattered to me. It's kind of like a crazy, exciting game. I figure I was pretty lucky for whatever I could get out of it. Guess I should be thankful, too, huh? Funny. I had it good for so long. Could have any man I wanted, so I figured one could never be enough. So what are you beating yourself up for? I knew what you were. I was willing to take the chance because I figured you were worth it. Howard, look at me. I wanted it to be different with you. I really did. But you were gone for so long. I never was much on willpower, was I? You were beautiful, Mona. And I guess because I was young, it made everything all right. Funny thing about time. Five years ago, we were both young. Now it's like someone put a hundred years between us. Look, Mona, even if that were true, you got your money's worth. Is there anything you can do? I'm sorry. Doctor, please bring my wife in here. You know what she's thinking. You understand, don't you? Yes, I think I do. Remember what you used to say to me? Baby boy. I always had that kind of feeling for you. I must have seen the handwriting on the wall. Baby boy. You looked so fine in your uniform when you went away. So sweet and scared. I was scared. I knew what would happen. I hated myself because I knew I couldn't blame you. I figured I was a, a prized chump. I wanted to hang on to you for just a little longer. I wanted to tell you not to be scared. But you wanted to be a big, brave man. Have a stiff back and walk away with a determined look in your eye. I wanted to cry like a baby. Crazy, huh? My boy wanted to be a man, and I never wanted him to grow up. We all have to grow up. Sooner or later, Mona. I have. Yeah, I know. I could tell as soon as you walked in. Is that why you asked Sergeant Quinn to find me? Is that why you... You pulled this halfway suicide? That's partly it, I guess. I woke up this morning, looked in the mirror. All of a sudden, I got tired of kidding myself. All of a sudden, I thought of you. It was like I'd seen you just yesterday. The yesterdays are all gone, Mona. I guess that's why I did it. I guess that's what I wanted to hear. Only I wanted to look at you. And I wanted you to look at me.
you're married. Yes. Lucky girl. Any kids? Two. That's nice. I guess you got to be getting back. No hurry. Sit with me a while. They still won't go in, huh? No, I'm going to talk to her now. There isn't much time, Mrs. Lopescu. There never was any time. Because there never was a beginning. Mrs. Lopescu, I'm going to say this just once. And you'd better listen. Because if you don't, you'll regret it the rest of your life. Now, maybe when your son was born, you were ashamed. Perhaps you thought it was your fault or your husband's. I don't want to listen to you. You don't have any right to talk to me. You don't know how I felt. Let's think for a moment how your boy feels. He's a living, breathing being. He needs love. Even the lowest form of animal deserves that. I tried to love him, Doctor. I swear I did. I tried. Well, Mrs. Lepescu, maybe fear or humiliation covered it up. But you do love him. And because you do, you're using the fact that he's retarded as an excuse. That's not true. But it is true. You're a mother, and you're about to lose your son. And if you think that you can escape the grief that you're going to feel by saying that it doesn't matter to you, you're wrong. Sooner or later, it will come. And Mrs. Lepescu, you'd better let it come now. Because if you don't, your son will have died with nothing. Yes, he is. Would you like to see him? Yes, if I could. My name is Angela Cartwright. Dr. Pearson? Miss Cartwright to see Mr. Yates. <coughs> oh, yes. Would you come with me? Hi. It's a 
little Ronnie. Did you talk to her? I'm going out there and bring her no, in here. Wait, wait, wait. Just, just give her a chance, huh? said, Ronnie. Sure. I'll call you tomorrow at home. again. You don't mean she's going to call it quits after all you've been through. No. No, she's ready to go steady. Well, what's your problem, kid? She wants me to become a motorcycle stunt driver. She wants me to hurry up and get well so she can have me try it again for her friends. Just a moment, I'll connect you. Excuse me, miss. Could you do me a favor? Well, I'll try. What is it? Will you ask Sergeant Quinn not to tell Miss James that you, that you found me living at the Y? I told her I was married. Sure. I understand. Good luck, Mr. Ames. Thanks. Emergency ward. I see. Right. Dr. Pearson. Pearson here. There's a three-car collision three blocks north of here at the throughway entrance. They're on their way in right now. All right. Uh, find Nurse Carter and have her come here immediately and ask Dr. Kohler if he'll assist me. Dr. Kohler, treatment room one. Dr. Kohler, treatment room one. Nurse Carter, treatment room one. Nurse Carter, treatment room one.
emergency ward is recorded on videotape by Paramount Television Production.